friends, my name is Emily from EB Knits. I'm coming at you today on YouTube. It's been a while. Thank you for your patience and waiting. I'm going to try and get better in 2021 about videos because I really want to create and find my community here in kind of like making and if anyone else wants to try crafting with me because I just get such a thrill of, uh, of trying new things and sharing my expertise with you guys. So my expertise is knitting and crochet, primarily knitting. I've learned to crochet during quarantine and I create um, handmade accessories, specifically the pop of color, and I focus on using all eco-friendly materials or reusing and recycling um, materials as well. So my shop is evnets.org if you want to check anything out, but today I'm coming at you with a different video. Uh, did I say you can find me on Instagram and Facebook, evnets as well, so send me a shout out, comment, let me know um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff so that we can, like I said, I just really want to create a community, find my community, because I have such a passion. Well, not only fiber arts, but also like crafting and, and trying new things as well. So today I am showing you my experience of ice dyeing. I only ice dyed two items so far, so it was very small. I just wanted to kind of dip my toes in and I didn't want to go overboard yet just because I didn't have all the dyes. I didn't feel comfortable buying tons of like 100% cotton things. I started with purchasing I had a pillowcase that my mom gave me it's a canvas pillowcase um, so I tried that and then I also worked on a sweatshirt so today is December 14th 2020 but this video won't be on YouTube until after Christmas because the whole reason I decided to do this right now is my family is doing a secret Santa since we're all gonna be virtual this year we thought that would be kind of a fun idea just my immediate family and like my brother's um, girlfriend so it's six of us and I got my brother's girlfriend. So I was like, oh no, I'm a little challenged. And we really, I specifically, but then in, in general with the Create Secret Santa initiative as well, we wanted to support small business and think small um, to try and help as much as we can in 2020. So I purchased something else from an Etsy shop that I think she's really gonna like. She had ended up setting an Amazon wish list, so this was something on there, but in my opinion, a lot cuter and from a small shop here in, uh, in the U.S. and Texas. So that's on the way, but I also, before I saw that wish list, I was just trying to think of her style and what I thought she would like. She really likes like cropped um, clothing and I was checking on her Instagram. She wears a lot of like neutral colors and I just thought, what if I get a cropped sweatshirt? Um, an ice dye it because I think tie dye ice dye is so on trend right now. Ice dye is a little less in your face than tie dye, and I went with some relatively neutral colors so that it's not totally crazy. So I'm hoping it's her style. If she doesn't like it, hopefully she knows someone she can give it to. But also, kind of just wanted to put a personal touch on it because I just feel like that's important in 2020, especially, is to say I'm I'm thinking of you extra. So. I wanted to purchase, I looked on Etsy, I looked on ThreadUp for sweatshirts, and nothing really stuck out to me, to be honest with you. Um, so I just got this one from Target. It's 100%, or it's not 100% cotton. The outside is 100% cotton, but some of the lining is polyester, I believe. Sorry, I'm trying to look at the label. Um, so I kind of failed there. But I feel good that I got another item from a small business, so a different one, and that I put a creative touch on this. So hopefully that's okay. Um, but I ended up purchasing this sweatshirt from Target, and that's another reason I only got this sweatshirt, because I wanted to just find items that I love, that are eco-friendly, that support the environment, etc. And I'm just willing to wait for that. So I wanted to start with this. So like I said, I saw that she liked neutral colors. So my first thing after buying the 100% cotton, well, like I said, it's not 100% cotton, but 100% cotton outside sweatshirt with a little bit of polyester lining, um, I went and chose my dyes. So this is a, oh, sorry. These are fiber reactive dyes from Dharma Trading. I saw that Christy Glass had used these in her ice dyeing and then she referred us to an Anna Joyce creative bug tutorial video. So I watched that like several times just because I wanted to make sure I was getting things right. Um, so I chose three colors. There was also a couple other tutorials. I searched pictures for some inspiration. I watched a few more tutorials, read a couple blog posts. 
And one blog post said, you know, don't use more than three colors. Looking back, I probably could have done less because something that Anna Joyce talks about is that every color is made up of just three primary colors. So even like brown is gonna have pops of different color and when it hits the dye, or hits, when it hits the dye, hits the ice, those are gonna come out. And I do see that in this sweatshirt as well. So um, I could have, probably could have gone with less color and I will, t or less dyes, and I will talk about that in a few minutes about my reflections. But this is what I did. I got this color pewter, this color khaki, and this color wedgewood blue. So these three dyes were the ones that I wanted. They were relatively neutral. This was like a gray blue. Um, pewter was just a more on the gray side, and then khaki was, I mean, like a khaki, but it had hints of green in it. So I thought those would be fun um, together. Okay, so I got these three dyes, and Dharma Trading on their website is really cool where you can just like slide and put the three colors next to each other to make sure they go. So I started off with like 20 colors that I had, was considering and got it down to these three. They also have colors that use um, turquoise, but turquoise is a special kind of dye method, so I was like, I'm going to avoid that for now. There was also colors that, a lot of the darker colors, especially more vibrant colors, where um, it takes two or four times the amount of dye than these other ones. So I said, no, I want to avoid those as well. I just want to keep it simple. So I went with these. Looking back, I guess now that I say it, that using the more those other ones with the darker colors, you could still use the same amount of dye and just get less vibrant colors. And that would be okay if that's your look that you're going for too. So um, let me tell you my process. So these came in and I wanted to get this done right away because like I said, today's the 14th. These came in yesterday, Sunday, um, and I need to get this in the mail if it's going to reach her. So um, I did it right away. So I already had kind of gotten my supplies together. I have a plastic sheet that just goes on the very, on the very minimal floor just to prevent anything from getting on the ground. Then I used an old garbage bin that we don't use anymore. I set that on top of the paper, or excuse me, of the plastic. And then I took a cookie sheet. And of course, this is a cookie sheet that was exclusively being used for dyeing now. So on top of that, and then you put your item on that cookie sheet, you cover it in ice. Um, now a reflection on the ice. I have an ice maker, I used the entire bin of ice that the ice maker made that day and it was full now when i think about it i don't really think i had an even layer of ice the middle definitely had more and the outsides had a little less which i don't mind the outside had less just maybe the middle should have been more even layer um also like i saw anna joyce uses a colander i think it's called and that way the ice doesn't fall off the sides i didn't have struggle with that um once you put the ice on there and get it secure it doesn't really fall off but just when you think about that, would be a creative idea to make sure everything stays in place as well. Um, I did it, other people just put the cookie sheet on their sink and let the dye drip into their sink. I was just nervous about that. I didn't want it dyeing my sink or impacting it in any way. So I did it straight into this, you know, garbage can that we can throw out or whatever. So then I had also seen that Christy Glass, she did it outside and had used some different supplies because she did it on more of a, a larger scale. She did, a, I said, a lot more items. So she put a large like drop cloth, tablecloth at the very bottom so that the dye would drip onto that. And then she had a really fun tablecloth at the end of her dye day. Now, I was using these more neutral muted colors, which aren't really my thing. I'm really into like warm colors and bright, vibrant rainbow colors. But like I said, this was for, for her and for someone else as a gift. But I still wanted to do the Chrissy Glass idea. And I put this canvas pillowcase that my mom got me earlier this year. Um, it just was like gray. And I put it at the bottom of the garbage can. Now I guess I didn't think ahead because when the ice melts and the dye it, it's all such dark colors that it's essentially like black, really dark color, just water at the bottom of the garbage can. And this was sitting at the bottom of it. So it just basically sat in dark dye. And it's definitely not my style. I don't know if every time I ice dye, I'll put this at the bottom and just see, it'll be a crazy mess of all kinds of colors. I don't know, but um, I'll show you that first. So this is the pillowcase that kind 
it was a fail. I really hate this big blotch of brown right there, especially. The back looks kind of cool. Um, but the front is kind of, we'll see. I don't know if there's something I can do about that. <laughs> but whatever, it's just a pillowcase and it was just an experiment, so it's fine. Um, so that is my experience. That's kind of my process. I ended up going to work. So I just let it sit the whole time I was at work. <laughs> um, and then when I got home, it was all melted. Or yeah, all the ice was melted and then this had been sitting in the dye. So that was probably another thing I went wrong with. Um, but it was nice that I didn't have to wait impatiently for the ice to melt. It just melted while I was gone. I was busy doing other things and come home. It's all melted. So then I just cleaned up my area and I ran both items under water in the bathtub because I was just closer to the bathtub than the kitchen sink. <laughs> and it was more space to work so it was fine the dyes i didn't like let the dye sit in the tub or anything to stain it i just immediately made sure that nothing um stayed on the edges of the tub or anything like that if that makes sense and then as far as like before i forget the the garbage bin progress it's white again i just rinsed it out there's no like left residue or it's not stained if it matters to you or anyone else um so let me show you so then i ran it under cold to warm water um it took a while i'm guessing just because these were such dark colors that they took so long to rinse but it took a while to rinse so then that was late at night by this point and so i just let it sit on my drying rack until this morning and then today i just got back i put it in my washer and dryer um just on a light load cool cold water and a lot of the dye faded and came off some more. And it doesn't look bad. I'm not mad at it. It's just a lot less vibrant. So I'll make sure to, you can check my Instagram highlights and stories, um, or um, I will do my best to put pictures in here or video as well. So this is the finished cropped sweatshirt that is ice tied. And it's kind of crazy how many, let I show you the how many different colors came out of these three that were supposed to be essentially just like a gray blue a gray and a khaki greenish color so there's lots of lots of different colors on this um this sweatshirt was tan originally it was this like this is this is too much not too much dye gone on this part so that's what the color was it wasn't pure white it was a tan color not just because that's what they had at the store and i didn't mind i thought she might like that there's a lot more dye on this than on my inspiration. My inspiration photos had a lot less, so I think I went a little crazy. I was too excited and used too much dye. I just like sprinkled too much around. I should have left either spots without ice or just used less dye and left some of the ice plain, not with dye on it. But I got excited and I wanted to use all of them. And I still think it's really cute. It kind of looks like we're going to paint and it's like splatter with paint or something but in a much more like I don't know artistic kind of way like it, it looks really cool if you ask me I think it's cool I hope she doesn't think it looks too messy or anything like just look at these blues are so white and there's purple in there I'll show you the back of this too because like right there where did that come from this is like a good indication of some different colors it's just really cool how many colors and shades. Like, look at that purple. It all makes sense, like, when you think about it, when I tell you what my dye colors were supposed to be. It's just so cool how many different shades and how dark some of it is, how light some of it is, how they incorporate together. So, yeah, when I was placing my dyes, I didn't really, I didn't at all overlap dyes. I didn't put, like, the gray on top of the Whatever, I didn't put like the Wedgwood Blue on top of the khaki. I just left them in their separate spots. But I did cover the ice. I did pretty much cover the ice in dye. And I, I used it with a plastic spoon. So I just took a plastic spoon and applied it. And they suggest like half a teaspoon. Again, I used a plastic spoon, so I don't know. But it was just like the tip of the spoon. It wasn't even a lot of dye. And I'm saying now that looking back, I would use less dye. So that's just you really don't need to use much. It's nice these come covered in electrical tape 
um, because this dye powder has a tendency to get everywhere. I've noticed that when I tie dyed earlier this year, so um, it's really nice that they just, that's like a smart idea, the electrical tape it, so that way I just used the tape again, it was fine. That way, if there's any spare dye, it's not coming out. So that's really nice. I got three other colors as well of more of <laughs> my thing, orange, watermelon, and purple. Because I saw a dress that I really loved. It was like purple into reds into orange. And it was so cool looking. But I just couldn't find a dress that I thought was cute enough to do this yet. So in time, I'll find a dress. I'll find more things because I definitely want to pursue ice dyeing some more. Um, those are my reflections. I hope I'm not forgetting anything. Let me show you this item. And again, I, it's just one thing. So I hope it's not too boring. I hope I'm chit-chatting. It wasn't too boring, but this was a really, really fun simple task. Oh, I didn't even mention. Do you have to pre I pre-soaked my fabric in soda ash. Totally forgot to mention that step. So I have soda ash from when I was um, just tie-dyeing cotton earlier in the year. Um, and this dye would work for tie-dye too, ice dyeing, all kinds of things. It's just mainly for natural fibers. So, um, I mean cellulose fibers. It's uh, so like plant-based fibers is what this is best used for. So you can use this for tie-dyeing, ice dyeing, all kinds of things but soda ash. So what I did and what I heard is that one cup of soda ash to one gallon of water, that's all I used. I used one cup of soda ash and one cup of water for both these items. I had another shirt. I have a white shirt that I also got that I wanted to ice dye actually, now that I think of it. And I, I soaked that in soda ash, but I wanted to try my other more colorful dyes with that. So, and I didn't want that dye mixing with this dye for doing it, if I'm doing it in the same room because it really does, can really get everywhere. Even if a little bit gets on your gloves that you don't really see. I didn't want a mixing, I didn't want a chance. So not so much for my shirt, but because of this, I, I didn't want it to be too crazy, even though it kind of is, but I really hope she likes it. Um, I really am surprised in the wash how much more faded it got. So that's interesting to me, but it's still cute. So. Um, I was talking about soda ash, so I just did the one gallon of water, one cup of soda ash, I mixed it together with a plastic spoon, and just soaked my items in there for, oh, and I washed these, so I got these, I washed them this week, or several days ago, then washed and dried in the machine, then I soaked them in soda ash, solution for 20 minutes. It was probably 25 or 30 because I put the time around but then I let them soak a little bit longer. Um, removed them, squeezed out the excess soda ash, but that's it. I didn't like rinse them under water again. I didn't let them dry. I immediately put them on that cookie sheet and put the ice and put the dye and all that. So it really was a pretty simple and quick project. Like you just let it sit in the soda ash. Gathering all your materials is probably the most um, time consuming part because I mean, the actual process, you just put this on a cookie sheet, put the ice on, sprinkle some dye on, and that's it. And then it's just the ice is what's doing its magic. So that's really cool. I hope she she um, really loved it, the recipient. And I don't know, we'll see what I end up doing with this pillowcase because it's a little, it's not my style, but we do have like some blue accents. I'm making a blue blanket. We have a blue pillow that I made. so little hints of blue I guess and the darker colors will kind of match the vibe in here in our living room so we'll see who knows what happens with it but that is my experience ice dyeing oh I did want to mention like so this look look at this this is the part of the lining that's polyester so this is the inside you can see the dye on the inside as well but look at the lining that's polyester nothing so make sure you're not using synthetic fibers. You are using a cellulose fiber with these dyes because they're not going to stick to polyester or synthetic fibers. So that was really interesting because I had heard, oh, it might stick a little, it'll just make it less vibrant, it'll be much paler, but no, it's not on there at all. So that would definitely don't waste your time with the wrong fibers. I mean, there you can ice dye and dye with, with um, Synthetic fibers, you have to get the right dye to do it with. So, 
I am really excited. I'm going to continue ice dyeing. Um, I'm not sure when, but I am definitely, definitely going to do it again. I'm very excited. I'm going to try ice dyeing more things. I want to dye more yarn. So all of yet to come in my dyeing adventures. So thank you so much. Again, my name is Emily from EB Knits. If you're interested in my shop, it's ebknits.org. Or just follow me on Facebook and Instagram at EB Knits. And I have a, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a whole highlight of my dyeing um, process and experience on my Instagram highlights. Just say hello and thank you for joining me.